We've got big news if you want to see us live on tour. I've decided that I want to make a certain purchase. Jordan's got some solid life advice for us all. And that's not the only advice I'm dishing out. I've arranged a little treat for Jordan whilst we're on the road with our shows. And if you're wondering what's around my neck, let's just say I'm very stiff. It's going to be a good episode, this. <laughs> it's going to be great. You're joining us, me and William are both in the wars this week. In the wars? Yeah. <laughs> William's full of cold. Yeah. I'm currently speaking to you with a neck pillow on because I've done my neck in again. <laughs> Stress, apparently. Stress, you? Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, we've no producers here because they're both on the holidays. Yeah. Does anyone any bloody work on this podcast these days? Anyway, shall we start? Let's go for it. Hello and welcome to Help I Sexted My Boss, the podcast where we help you navigate the challenges of modern life. Answering your 21st century questions and finding solutions to those everyday dilemmas. Like, is it okay to stream the Colombian ballroom orchestra version of YMCA on repeat? I can't stop listening to it. It's a good tune, It's isn't literally, it? it's on my algorithm now. <laughs> since you played it the other week, I've been getting up in the morning and... Having a little boogie. Yeah, yeah, I think we should do it on the tour. I got a message from Stuart, our, our producer uh, in exotic climbs, and uh, saying... Could I send it to him so he can um, put it into the tour mix? Yeah, definitely. And I, I think it'd be great if you, to be put on hold to. You know, if like, okay, Mr. North, just uh, give me a minute. <laughs> it was very easily accessible on his phone. <laughs> you have been listening to it. It's, wait, two, three. Do, do. Do, 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 do. Can I just say? I love the ending. Just wait for the ending. Oh. Wait. We never did the ending. No, wait. It ends brilliantly. All I'll say is, first song on Capital. And never work again. <laughs> anyway, where were we? How do you respond if your partner shouts Sprinkle Sparkle Spunk in bed? Uh, is Mike even doing that yet? No, he has not. And what should you do if you've accidentally sexted your boss? But we're not usual agony ants, are we, William Hansen, the UK's leading etiquette expert, TikToker and podcaster? No, we're not Jordan North, uh, radio presenter of the youth's biggest radio station with a neck brace. Uh, what? And podcaster and documentary maker. Thank you very okay, much. Fine. We'll talk about that in a minute. Thank you. A few weeks ago now. I'm more dressing down. You're more dressing gown. And thanks to Simon Harper That's for that. That's very true. That's very true. Oh, I wore a dressing gown on uh, Saturday night takeaway dinner mm. the other week. The amount of Gene Divas. They're like, can I take that belt on? Uh, right. Who are, we, who are we toasting to? Well, I think we should toast. I'm just pouring its new bottle of Debonnet. Well, T two things. I think it should be a dual toast. I'd like to toast Danny B because Danny sent us a direct Off of message. Rock FM. No, I don't, I don't think so. He was so. one of my idols. Danny B? Yeah, he, he used to work at Rocky FM. He's still around Lancashire now. He used to do a show. It was very of its time. He did it with a girl. It was called The Bird and the Bee at Breakfast. Oh, right. Yeah, he's called Danny B. He's right. a great radio presenter. I used to listen to him every morning on Rocky FM. Well, this potentially could be him. It could be someone else. But he sent us a DM to say that he's uh, he doesn't listen out of choice. Thank you. Uh, but he's forced to listen because his girlfriend uh, has us on repeat. And he said he's heard each episode about three times and can't cope any longer. So we're very sorry, Danny, but this is for you. You'll hear this three times. Danny B. Danny B. Also, thanks to... Oh, that's got a kick. Chris Goff, who originally sent us the lovely glasses that we only now have one of because you broke it. We thought, actually, when we were opening the package from him again today, it was more crystal glassware. Instead... It's a nice plastic beaker oh. that says Jordan on it. Honestly, it's at least once a week with me. We should do a new feature. Guess what Jordan broke this week? What's Jordan smashed this week? A full, <laughs> oh, I say half full tub of peanut butter. Oh. Yeah. Crunchy or smooth? Uh, crunchy. Mm. But I like both. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I sometimes get smooth, sometimes get crunchy. Depends what you're in the mood for. Well, depends what I'm in the mood for. Uh, also, peanut butter and marmite on toast. Oh. Do that again. <laughs> It's very much. It's very much. <laughs> um, um, thank you. Yes, thank you to Danny B and to Chris for that. He says that with those plastic glasswares, the microphones will come off worse next time. Oh, okay. They're solid. They are solid. Dishwasher safe, I'm sure. Yeah. There's two of them as well, so Great. if anything happens, we're okay. Thank you. We've got some big news. We have some huge news. Um, we've been sort of teasing this for a few weeks, so we're excited to actually now share it with you. When we decided to go on tour, we had no idea how many of you wonderful Gene Divas 
would want to come and see us. And genuinely, we've been so overwhelmed mm. when all the tickets sold out quickly. Because yeah. when we do a tour, we're like, are we going to sell? Is this, is this going to be the one that doesn't sell? Because yeah. everyone has a bit of a lull. Even Taylor Swift a few years ago. Oh, did she? Where, a few years ago, was struggling to sell tickets, but I think everyone was. Yeah. The, the Swifties are going to go mad at that, but I don't quote me on that. But anyway. Do you want a Swiftie? I beg your pardon? Do you want a Swiftie? Is that, what's that Cockney rhyming slang? Taylor what? Swift. Yeah. Her fans are called Swifties. Oh, right. Get with the times, William. Come oh, on. Sorry. But you must remember in our house, Mikey thought it was pronounced the Eras Tour and was saying, oh, Taylor Swift's Eras Tour, not knowing it was Eras. Eras. Anyway, we've had it's lots... As if he's from fucking Wakefield. <laughs> We've had lots of messages asking us to play live shows in loads of different places. And as much as we'd love to go to Norwich, there are so many factors that go into where we do live shows. And it's not really down to us. We obviously, we can't get around everywhere. No. Um, but obviously, we don't want anyone to feel left out. So if you haven't got tickets for one of our live shows and you want to join in the fun, or you can't travel to see us because we're not playing nearby, we've got something for you. G and Divas, on Tuesday the 14th of May... Help, I sexted my boss. We'll be broadcast live into cinemas! Oh, it keeps going. Pearl and Dean, it's called this. Yes, I know. Okay. I'm more Pearl and Dean, you're more Torval and Dean. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, our show at the London Palladium will be beamed live via satellite to the big screen. We're like Elvis. That's what he did in the 70s. Is it? Yeah. We're catching up. Uh, that means that when we're on stage doing our thing on the 14th of May, you'll be able to be part of it live as it happens at a cinema near you. We are, of course, very excited. You can round up the G&D Divas in your local area, willingly, mm -hmm. uh, don't take them hostage, and have a great night out experiencing the show as it happens live on the big screen. And you'll be able to be part of the show too. We've got loads of surprises planned for the tour and lots of interaction, so you'll be able to get involved wherever you are. Wow. And this is, we should just say for any historians listening, yes. is the first time ever that a podcast has been broadcast live into cinemas. So we are very touched and honoured that we are making history and everyone can be part of it. And we wouldn't be here without you. And we're just so thankful for everyone's support and for listening to us too. Chat and shit every week, basically. And we want as many people as possible to join in the Sexted Live fun. Yes, yeah, so if you want to get tickets to see Sexted in the cinema... Sexted in the cinema! They go on sale on Tuesday the 9th of April at 10am, which, if you're listening to this contemporaneously, is a week today. So they go on sale on Tuesday the 9th of April at 10am. All the details you need... What a, what a URL, I never thought I'd be saying this, is at sextedmyboss.com slash cinema wow so exciting it is it's it's so as if we're going to be beaming into cinemas i know just oh, us just us and the cameras and all those wonderful g and divas don't you know i get nervous out there in the dark oh and now mr demille i'm ready for my close-up <laughs> It's Sunset Boulevard. What the fuck are you doing? It's Sunset Boulevard. What the hell was that? It's Sunset Boulevard, Norma Desmond. I had no idea what you've just done there. Well, the homosexual community listening have just wet their pants listening to that. I don't know what that was, but that was an amazing moment. Thank you so much. Wow. It's not often that you're filmed and projected onto screens. Although I have starred in two films previously before. What? Ushi Must Marry. Oh, maybe it's only one. Oh, yeah, no, Ushi Must Marry in a French one. Really? Yeah, it was a Dutch film and a French one. I'm yet to be filmed for a British or American film. I was an extra on the Iceland ads with Kerry Katona. <laughs> <laughs> what was? was? Have we ever talked about that? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> were you a frozen chicken nugget? No. What were you? So, remember when Iceland used to... Have Kerry Katona. And sponsor um, I'm a Celeb. Yes. Yeah, well, I got some work experience. They filmed it in Stockport. And I was uh, Kerry Katona's runner, actually. And Jason, oh, so you weren't on the advert. Well, and Jason Donovan was on it as well. And then they needed some extra. Gosh, they blew the budget on that advert, so didn't they? I had to pretend to be paparazzi. If anyone can find that, please <laughs> let us know. 
Honestly, you were, you were one. You were one of the that how what a full circle moment. You were in the sort of the the sponsorship bumper before the mm. program, and then how many years later you were in the program? I've lived a million lives, William. You have. I really have. <laughs> I really have. Shall I take this neck brace off now? I mean, if it's helping you, I, I might have to put it. Oh God. I'm, so you've been in the wars. I've been in the wars. I'm going to see a ph my physio after this. Yeah, last week you weren't you weren't great either mm. with your neck. I remember uh, when I was rowing. Yes, and I had. Uh, Won't Rose, let us forget. From Rosie, the physio was with us that week. Rosie, the rowing physio. Rosie, the rowing physio. Yeah, and um, I got in contact with her. She's got a little clinic in London, so she sorted me out the other week. But yeah, I'm going straight after this. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. I, I, anyway, how's your week been? Well, not great either. No, I'm in the wars. Why? What's up with you? I've been necking the oral rinse once again for the second time this year. You can probably hear it in my voice. If anyone needs any voiceovers, today's the day to do it. Why? Well, because I'm sounding a little bit deep and sexy, aren't I? <laughs> Is it doing things for you and your neck pillow? Absolutely not. No. Anything else stiff? <laughs> no. No, I'm okay. I'm clinging on to the wreckage. Okay. It's all over now, but you've been on Big Brother lots, haven't you? Yeah, it's, it's been a busy old week. So yes. I've been on Big Brother late and live. It's nice. Late and live. It's a great name for a show, that, isn't it? Late and live. Late and live. Late and live. So, Is yeah, I've been on that. Late and live, one of the other panellists. No, and that's Late, late and William. William. Very Sorry. good. Thank you. Very good. But um, at the time of recording, yeah. we'll be honest, we, we don't know who the winner is yet, but I've, no. uh, David's my favourite. Okay. Yeah. Do you want, why don't you say everyone's name now? We'll edit in your oh, prediction okay. and you'll look uh, really psychic. Uh, Nikita might win. Mm. Uh, um, Fern. Fern might win. Uh, I always knew that uh, Louis would win. <laughs> uh, uh, who else in there? Colson. Colson. Win. Oh, yes, he's very yeah. good. And uh, uh, oh, Bradley. Bradley might win. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, Heartstopper. Yeah. yeah. So it's been a really... I, I, I'm, I have loved this show since... Did you ever watch it when you were younger? Well, I remember I was a panellist on Big Brother's, whatever it was called, little bit on the brother side Sad. or whatever. Were yeah. you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Were you? That's my first... Well, no, my second bit of was national that with TV. Ryan? No, that was with George Lamb. Wow. Yes. I seen him at Glastonbury last year. Did you? Yeah. Were you on that? Yeah, I did I, it for two or three years. Did you never watch it when you were younger? No. Oh, I used I was obsessed. I used to watch the live stream and everything. Did you? Oh, wow, you were yeah. committed. Oh, it, was, it was at the time. It was like the best. It still is like the best bit of Brit. I just this, I'm not that into reality shows. Uh, that's not. You true. were on one. Yeah, I do like them, but this is my one of my favourites. Definitely. Okay. So, um, I've been on Big Brother. It's just good. I went mm. in the actual house as well. You go. Did you? Yeah, you go and sneak in and you go up to the windows and see him. Oh, okay, so, but not yeah. in. Okay. Um. The, the thing I'm going to miss the most is yeah. the catering is banging. Is it? Honestly. Because you're in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Yeah. Honestly, I've not been that well fed since I stayed at my Auntie Maggie's for a week. <laughs> I, I fell out with my mum and left yeah. when I was 16, so I moved in with my Auntie Mags. Okay. And she's a proper feeder. But um, oh, food's been great. I've had curries. They have meatless Mondays. Meatless Mondays. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> believe that's popular in your house. It's not popular, but we do it. Yeah, yeah. it's got to be done, hasn't it? Talking of the tour, mm -hmm. we've had lots of people, I don't know about you, but DMing me, oh. going, please make Jordan do the Guinness joke. Right, so many people have slid into my DMs asking me to do the Guinness mm. joke. It, for those of you who don't know, I did, I got told this joke when I was about 16, 17. My dad told it me in the pub with Pilks, right? <laughs> Still to this day, Pilky says it's the funniest joke he's ever heard. Pilks was on the floor laughing, mm. right? I, I did the joke when we were last in Dublin and we and we recorded it and we decided to cut it from the podcast because it's very, very rude. I did it recently when we went to Alex Polizzi's hotel, mm. didn't we? And From which we're now probably banned. Chairman Emeritus Stewart was howling because he'd not seen it before. <laughs> Mikey loved it as well. And I am worried about doing it on top. Two reasons I'm worried. It Like, we've built it up. It might not be that funny. No. And second thing is, I could possibly get cancelled. Yeah. Yeah. You're also going to consider, because we're now going to be beamed into cinemas, so that Guinness joke is going to be seen on a massive screen. I might do it on tour, maybe. Now, I want to get your thoughts and opinions on this. I'm, I'm getting to the age, I'm getting to the stage in my life mm. where I think I want to get a hot tub. Oh. I just, I think... Do you ever want to sell your house ever again? I just think I'm ready for a hot tub. People, like, turn their nose up at them a bit. Some people think they're a bit... Yeah, Jonathan calls them sex ponds. Mm, don't say that, because my mum and dad um, always go to Bill and Michelle's hot tub. 
I'll say nothing. And my grandma Glennis has a hot tub night every Friday with her boyfriend Nigel. Does she? Yeah. I'm saying nothing. And you can use them in all weathers. Mm. Mm. I once, I don't want to talk about this actually, but I've, I've been in a hot tub many times, but I once went on one in the Lake District. Emma, if you're listening... Oh, I think you have talked about this. I got a bit carried away and we're all drunk and I pretended to be the toe monster and grabbed Emma's toe and licked it. Uh, Right. And her then fiancé... Can I ask which toe? I think it was a big toe. Okay. Yeah, I got a bit carried away. Fine. Yeah. And her fiancé... Her fiancé, oh, right. My best friend, Ash. Yeah. Him. It was a bit... Yeah, it just went a bit too far. Do you keep in touch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I just think I want a hot tub. They're cool. And if we get it in the garden, because I know where I've been looking where I'd get it, um, you and Mikey can come round and we'll no. have hot tub parties. No. Play some music. No. If any g and are listening who've got a hot tub, get in touch. People think they're a bit... They're Petri dishes of filth. You wash them out. How can I put this? You, darling, well, you actually, you're quite clean, so you probably would. They're a bit... How can I put... Retro? Mm. Sleazy? No, a bit... Pervy? A bit live, laugh, love. Yeah. Yeah. And I grew up with shit like that, so... Mm. I think they're the modern-day conservatory. Oh, right. <laughs> you know, in 90s, in my in, in, in my street, if you had a conservatory, you're doing well for yourself. Oh, well, yeah. My auntie Linda had one in Accrington. We weren't allowed in it. We used to stay at the fresh Was it a show conservatory? No, my mum and auntie Linda used to drink tea in there, and we'd just watch from... Outside. Through the glass, yeah, like animals that, at the zoo, all that wicker furniture and stuff. Oh, yeah, <laughs> dates it. And then people, I bet you called it an orangery, didn't you? Uh, an orangery and the conservatory are two separate things. Mm. An orangery has a solid roof, not mm. a glass roof. Rick, my best mate at school, had mm. um, a conservatory. Did he? Yeah. And then I knew. Then I went in his house. I was like, "We've got a conservatory," and they had proper Ribena. Proper. Yeah, not like little zone that we have. Wow. Yeah. Well, look, you get a hot tub if you want. Come round. No. We can be hot tub buddies. D- you're not licking my toe. I don't want to lick your toe, <laughs> but we can be hot toe buddies. No. Hot toe, hot tub buddies. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey, had, Mikey would he pretend. He would not. No, he'd pretend and he'd love it. Come on. I tell you what, I would get in the hot tub if I am the first person in the hot tub, but when it's been then used by lots of other people. You can clear it out. I just don't think people do. I had one on the balcony on my birthday in Lake District. You need to clear out the nozzles with the with the cotton bud and yeah, you know properly do it. They get you well pissed, you know, because hot heat, tubs. Yeah, if you're drinking them, they get you goes too red. Right. Mm. Anyway, what's been going on in your world? Well, when I went to the doctors, I'm now worried about my eyes. You went to the doctors because I was ill. I wanted to know if it was it oh, was bacterial. Really, or viral. I'm not being funny, but they're busy. You don't go <laughs> to the doctors because you got a bit of a. Cold. Excuse me, I phoned them for a telephone consultation because I thought they were going to put me on antibiotics. I described my symptoms and the doctor said to me, can you come in and see me? And what was it? It's just a virus. So, you know, you can't get antibiotics? For no, you can't. No, they just told me to write it out. Yeah. It's, it's, it's always could, been my motto. I, I could have told you that. Yeah, well, anyway, but she, she said to me, she went, and can you see it? Can you feel it in your eyes? I said, oh, not really. And she went, oh, do you normally just have puffy eyes then? Oh, so look, now I'm worried about my eyes. I don't think I've got puffy eyes at all. You've only got those eye slugs. I yes. have yeah. I know. I need to. I need to find that out. Um, we should also say um, congratulations to Jordan for your documentary. Oh, thank you. Which was a few weeks ago now. Yeah. And uh, that was very good on mm. vaping. Mm. I think it's still available on BBC iPlayer. Yeah. If you want to go and watch it. Felt like Ross Kemp and Stacey Dooley in one. <laughs> <laughs> More like Ross Kemp. Um, Cheers. <laughs> no, it was very, very good. I've enjoyed, I've only watched half of it so far at time of recording. Oh, okay. But because I was I was ill. I know the bit you're going to mention right now. Is it the bit you, at the start? Yeah. About I want to know more about what I'm putting in my mouth. Sticking in my mouth. Sticking in your yeah. mouth. They've had so many DMs and messages. I that. watched that clip that you put on your Instagram, not having watched the documentary yet, mm. and I genuinely, partially also half of it was the virus. Could not breathe from laughing. What's so funny about that? <laughs> I don't know. Do you want me to play it? Let me find it. Hang on. It was a good documentary. It was, and it's highlighting a serious point. Uh, here we go. It's time I found out exactly what I'm sticking in my mouth. <laughs> like when, you, when you go in to do the voiceover session and you sort of read the script, did you not at any point go, yeah, that that's going to get some attention? No. Particularly, even producer Ben messaged me going, you need to talk about this on the podcast. Oh, I messaged Ben. Did you? I've DM'd him. 
Yeah. He said he's watching it on some coach in Colombia. I don't know where he is. And mm. I said, oh, good to hear from you. By the way, when you get back, <laughs> you might be getting rimmed on stage. And his response? <laughs> no reply. Yet. No. Okay. Funny well, enough. But no, look, well done on your documentary. We've had a letter from Richard Sharp oh. about it. Um, Dear William, please can you talk to Jordan about his BBC Three documentary on vaping? Um, This was an informative and interesting documentary, which I found very thought provoking. Thank you. But we did get some glimpses into the North Mansion. Jordan pouring his drip coffee, opening his panoramic bifold doors into his garden and a glimpse of Jordan's bed. William, this is too good an opportunity to miss for you to wind him up. Do your best. Much love to you all, Richard Sharp. First of all, uh, they said this is what you, you I, I don't like anyone filming in my house, do mm. I? I've said this before. And, no. And like when they wanted to do that pot noodle advert in my house, I was like, no, we're not filming in my house. No, but you were like, you can use yours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so we didn't film in our house. And then for this, they were like, it's just going to be one shot. We promise you, we won't show much of your house. I might as well give me a bloody postcode out. <laughs> I don't think they showed that much. Oh, yeah. I met him. Then you showed two bits. of the reception rooms. It was the study and the kitchen. Oh, was it the study? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, it looked very nice. Thank you. Are you are you excited to be a documentary maker now? You annoyed me now. I didn't, I'm never no more Why filming in my house. You? No more filming in my house. Private life's a happy life. Um, yeah, no, it's good. I might be. Doing and some... can I ask a question about vaping? Yeah. Do you still vape? Not really. No. 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 I'm cutting down on the cigs as well. You a were. People, a lot of people have been asking me, but I've stopped vaping. So basically, I was pretty much stopped smoking and I was vaping. But what it was is I was vaping more than I was smoking so I'd have this little plastic thing in me mm. and, and I was constantly chonging on it constantly you were a serial vapist I was a serial vapist and then at night I was like I had it as soon as I got in from work I'd just have it and be watching telly and I was like this and then I started getting worse coughs but the evidence suggests that it is better than smoking but I would suggest that neither are great for you yes yeah so nearly there Okay, very good. Um, The other thing uh, I noticed last week when we had a nice little brunch after our recording is you get very, very arsy if when you've asked for ketchup and mayonnaise for your scrambled eggs, discuss, if they don't bring it to you within like five seconds. It annoys me so much when you eat out and you ask for your compliment, not compliment. (laughs) I'm sitting here waiting to be complimented. Condiments. Condiments. When you ask for your condiments and it takes five minutes because you can't, it's worse when you get a burger and chips. You go, oh, can I get some ketchup, please, and some mayonnaise? And they take like 10 minutes and you're like, your burger's going cold and you want it straight away. Mm. Don't, because they're lovely here. But they were just taking the time bringing my mayonnaise over. They took about 30 seconds. In there. I'd, I'd sent you up at one point, didn't I? Yes, I had to go and, and ask, and they were doing it. We absolutely love Jonathan and all the stuff here. It's so good. We always get something to eat after the recording. Mm. I'm going to get the um, feta avocado honey oh. and eggs on sourdough. Honey and eggs? I just put a little bit of honey on it. It's, mm. Oh, I like that. La Missio. What is that? What? La Missio. La Missio? La, la Missio. It's, it's dead nice. Bellissimo. Bla- it's, it's dead nice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Bellissimo is, is Italian, Bam- but it's dead nice. Bamalissimo. Yeah. Um, other bit of admin, just before we go on to... Um... We're in cinemas. What else do we need to know? Yeah. We're in cinemas, baby. Um, if you want to hear more of us in your ears, if this is not enough, if twice a week is not enough, we are on the new episode of Dish, <gasps> which is the Waitrose podcast with your former colleague Nick Grimshaw and Angela Hartnett. Uh, that's out tomorrow. Now, we're lucky enough to be a guest on other podcasts, but that was my favourite. Well, they feed you. They feed you. Yes. And I, it, I make it no secret, I love food. Yeah. So Angela and Grimmy do a pro- podcast about mm. food. Yes. It's sponsored by Waitrose and it's brilliant. I've listened to quite a few episodes and we were on it. And um, also, it's good to know that, um, listen to it, because 20 minutes before that recording... I was called by the BBC to be told that was my last show. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> and, and I'm going to be serious for a minute, and I said this to you at the time, to say that you had had the news that you did, you were phenomenal. Oh, bless you. You were so good. You were on point. You were funny. You gave your full attention. You were great. Should we do William's Etiquetomology after the break? Let's do it. I'm going to talk all about gin. Oh. And why it used to be called Mother's Ruin. Oh. More after this. It's William, William, the etiquette geek. His knowledge, knowledge, is quite unique. He'll give you manners, manners, a subtle tweak. It's time for William's etiquette, 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 etiquette
brace off now. You take the neck brace off. Is that any better? Just, I've got exercises to do. I've got to push my head that way. <laughs> anyway, so it's not about me now, it's about you. Go no, on, it's normally about you, but don't worry. Don't be a bitch. <laughs> uh, right, my eschatology. Uh, a few people asked, why uh, was gin called Mother's Ruin for many years? Or it still is sort of colloquially known as Mother's Ruin. And actually, it's been... Gin has had a funny sort of history because sometimes it's been quite common mm -hmm. and sometimes it's quite posh. Oh, okay. I would argue it's gone back to being quite common. Can you do one on Prosecco after this? <laughs> I'm doing honeymoons next. Oh. But yeah, I'll add it onto the okay, list. Yes, you. okay. Anyway, whilst juniper-flavoured spirits have existed since the Middle Ages, the ancestor of today's gin is the Dutch Geneva. Not to be confused, different spelling from where I was um, held hostage. Um, it was originally a more multi drink with an unpalatable oh, flavour. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> Neck. It was quite unpalatable, basically. Um, so herbs like juniper, which is sort of the main ingredient in gin, were added to mask the taste and make it drinkable. Um, anyway, and it became very popular over here during um, the reign of William III and his uh, English wife, Mary. Um, William III was Dutch, the Dutch king, William of Orange. What year was that? In uh, the 1700s. Anyway, from the late 1600s, several changes in the law saw gin fall from high society. The distillation of gin became legal alongside a huge increase in tax on French brandy. And so the gin craze was born. Thousands of small house-based gin makers set up shops selling gin at very low prices. Uh, and thus they would put all sorts of stuff in it. So it was not very good quality gin. It was so cheap and it was regularly drunk by the poorest in society as the gin they drank was the most corrupted with all these things like sulfuric acid and turpentine. And basically, it because it was so bad, they would get so inebriated, uh, they would neglect their children. So it was known as mother's ruin. Oh. And it then gin then became posh again, um, basically thanks to tonic water and malaria. The British Army officers began to mix quinine tablets with tonic water, which was basically just fizzy water, um, and a spoonful of sugar and gin to make the medicine go down. And the G&T was born. Um, and basically then ready-made tonic came in. Schweppes was the first company to do it. Um, and so during the, the height of the empire, the G&T was fashionable, whereas back home it was still common. And then obviously once the officers returned home, uh, they brought back the gin and tonic and it became Smart again. The first time I had gin and tonic, it swept me off my feet. Oh, <laughs> um, that was really interesting. I love a G and T. I, I like love it. a G and T. We both love a G and T. Obviously, we love a G and D more. But yeah. you could say that about most alcoholic drinks. April. That was for pauper. We've done that before. Yeah. yeah, but now it's for like you. You fancy if you have April spritz. Um, Are you uh, cider? Yes. That used to be like people with one tooth would drink it. You know. Okay. Yeah. Um, and now it's like dead fancy and cool. Yes. That was a great advert, that sat that strong bow one, that electric fields electric dreams one. Is it electric dreams? I don't know. I don't know. Living in electric fields. <laughs> is da, it da, dreams? Da, da, da. Oh, I know the yeah. song. Da, da. Is it dreams or fields? It is dreams. What are electric fields? <laughs> Anyone listening, don't be running around it's with the great big fields. pylons in them, I think. Uh, Prosecco was a bit fancy, was quite chic. Was it? Yeah, now it's like. Must have juice. missed that day. Oh, it's Wendy's tipple now. Is it? Mm. Yes, Lady Petrol. So there you go. Yeah. Um, well, now you know. Isn't G and T just? Isn't gin just vodka? Our no. version of it. That's what someone told me. Okay. I can't drink vodka. The Norths cannot drink vodka. Really? Mm. Oh, at the time of recording, I'll be on a stag do in Benidorm as well during this. I forgot to tell Hang you. On, at the time of recording, you're on a stag. What? At, at the time this goes out, oh, I'll I be see. on the stag do, won't I? Back to Benidorm. Yeah, Bradley stag do. But the time is great. You're very close to starting Capital. Are you a little bit like when you started this podcast and you had a completely weird voice? Are you going to start Capital yeah. with a completely weird Basically, voice? Basically, I think it's a good omen. I yeah. Like I should have said it in our little catch-up at the start, but um, trust me, the week before I start Capital... You're on a stag day. I'm on a stag day. That's incredibly bad timing. Mm -hmm. Can you yeah. withdraw? No. Not from Capital, I'm, I'm from the best man and it's my brother. We're in Benidorm right. again. Yeah. Right. But I'm, I'm all right. There's a copper going, so there's not going to be any trouble. I can't bloody move me now. Right. Now it's time for your <laughs> question. <What? laughs> you don't even attempt to make it sound like you're not reading. Now it's time for your questions and dilemmas. I'm better off script. Okay. Well, respectfully, you've said the same thing for six years. Well, respectfully, piss off. <laughs> now it's time for your questions. And now you're making this. Now I'm reading it like a. <clears throat> Try and do it from memory. Now it's time for your questions and dilemmas. Remember, mm. if you want to get in touch, you can send your tales of trepidation to 
help at sexofmyboss.com. You can DM us. We're at sexofmyboss on socials. Lovely. Remember, all of our questions and dilemmas have been sent in by you. We have no idea what is coming up, and we hear them for the first time as we read them. This first one is from Mitch to William Jordan and everyone Sorry, else. What have you got down your jumper? Oh, no, it's just the white popping through. Carry on. Yeah. Sorry. It's, it's a um, cable knit jumper, and that's what happens. Anyway, from Mitch to William Jordan and everyone else. My friend and I love Asian food, mm. but whenever we go to a restaurant, my friend picks up the chopsticks and drums them on the table, plates, and glassware. It drives me effing insane. I can see why. Do you do this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have thoughts. On several occasions, I have asked them to put them down before I drive one through my temple, but they do not listen. How do I get my friend to realise they're driving me crazy every time there's a set of chopsticks around? Thanks so much, Mitch. I do the full, 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 full Collins. Right. I can feel it come. <laughs> also, I think the height of sophistication is when somebody uses chopsticks. Okay. Can you use chopsticks? Yes. Yeah, I use them now. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Have I changed? Yeah. I think it's all right. As long as not doing it no, all right. But no, no, just, no. Just no, get no, them and no. do it and get it out of the system. That's what I do and I'll just do it. Right. On behalf of all of our Asian listeners, doing that with the chopsticks is the height of bad manners oh, and very bad. So don't. Oh. It's also irritating. I mean, forget the fact it's sort of bad in Asia. It's also highly irritating, as Mitch is, is saying. Okay. Same as you don't rub them together either. Oh. You shouldn't do that. You don't pick up a knife and fork and start rubbing them together and bashing everything. I, I can't do the rice with them. I do get a spoon for that or a fork. Yeah, well, they in, in some Asian cultures, they would use a rice for, for that anyway. They use the spoon. Mm. Um, the other thing to say is never with rice and chopsticks. Don't ever stick the chopsticks directly, sort of vertically into the rice. Right. I can't use chopsticks then. <laughs> Right, you should not be because that represents. Because I stab the chicken or the sushi with them. Well, you can, I wouldn't stab sushi. You can you can stab with chopsticks, oh. but um, don't sort of put them resting in the rice, pointing up, because that represents incense, which is burned at funerals in Asia, and so they consider it unlucky. Okay. They think that someone's going to die. I I think it's perfectly fine to do it at the start. Just get it out of your system. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. No. Okay. Well. As I say, on behalf of all of Asia, please don't. Do you know what? I'm going to have a Chinese this week. I'm not a Chinese for ages. Oh, really? Oh, a bit of duck pancake. Do you fancy a spicy prawn ball? Yes, absolutely. Sweet and sour chicken. Oh, I'm going to have a Chinese. Egg fried rice. <laughs> nice. Lovely. Mm. Anyway, this is from Anonymous. Hello, William and Jordan. I'm a new listener and have binged about 30 episodes in the last five days. Oh, oh, so thank you for that. And sorry about your mum's dog, Jordan. Oh, thank you. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. He's on fireplace now. Yes. I am pregnant with my first child and my friend, who is like a sister... Oh, she's packing some for us to take to Benidorm as well. What? Frank. She's packing Frank? She's giving us a bit. She put him in um, a little pack for us, so we've all got a bit of him. Are you going to sprinkle it? I don't know how I might put it in a locket or something. I'm not making this up, by the way. This is Wendy to a T. She's... Getting my dad to bring it over. Right. So we've all got a bit of fun. Is your dad coming on the snake, do you? Yeah. No, he's not, actually. So how is she doing that? Maybe we could scatter Frank's ashes. You know, at the end of shows, sometimes there's like I'm confetti not, cannons. I'm only getting a little bit. At the Palladium, we could... Bruce Forsyth's ashes are interred under the Palladium. Are they? We could put Frank next to Bruce. I'll put him in garden somewhere. He used to love garden. Did he ever go to the London Palladium? No, he never went to London. Oh, he never went to... Don't even let me cry. Oh, he never went to London. He had a good life, though. He did. Back to Anonymous. I'm pregnant with my first child, and my friend, who's like a sister to me, has given us some things for the baby that she had from when she had a baby. Everything is great, except we have different tastes and styles. I'm more of a naturals and neutrals kind of girl, whereas her house is grey and full of chrome and diamante. Live, laugh, love signs. I get the idea. Mirrored furniture, which leads hey, me to what? Right, I'm, I know. I, I'm sorry. I keep interrupting. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with mirrored furniture. Wendy's got a lot of mirrored furniture, and it okay. looks nice. Yes, it does. You can see yourself in it. Yeah, which leads me to my dilemma. She's given us a cot for the baby, but it is grey. I have a rule that I won't have anything grey in my house because my own mother scarred me for life with her grey crushed velvet sofa, matching grey carpets, and grey wallpaper. What is the etiquette for declining a cot? I will add that it is already in my house and I'm looking at it now feeling slightly ill. Thanks so much, Anonymous. That's a great question. I was going to say I'd take the clothes and just 
don't use them and then give them to a charity shop mm. or, a, or a local baby charity or something like that. Yes, the, I wouldn't. I wouldn't completely chuck it into landfill because it, it can. You know, you mm. might not like the colour, but it can be used by others. <laughs> I think you might have to be honest there and just be like, "Oh, do you know what? Because it's my first child, I, I want to get the own cut." But thanks very much anyway. Just be like, I'm really grateful, but mm. we've seen a cut that we really like, and we, we, we're saving up for it, and it's really special to us. And they should understand. Just be like, "Sorry, yeah." Or if, or you could paint it. I don't think you can paint a cot. You can paint carts. Just make sure it's like baby friendly paint. Oh, 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 I see. In my head, it was fabric. Sorry. But I guess it could be wooden cot, mm. maybe. I think you have two options. I don't know if Anonymous has a pet. Let's say they've got a dog. You could pretend that the dog scratched it or broke it or something. Just be honest. Or you say, thank you so much, but my parents, parents-in-law... Had had bought us one, yeah. and they got re- they they've they've given it to us, and we're a real dilemma because they've saved up. Mm. They really want us to use it, yeah. um, so we stuck it in the loft or yeah. something. We've got one coming. Just say you've already ordered one. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But it's too late. You've already accepted it, and I think if you could press rewind, I probably wouldn't. As Jordan mm-hmm. says, I would sort of probably have rejected it at source. Okay, is what I'd say. This is from Kate, K-A-T-E. Dear William and Jordan, a few years ago I lived in London. It was a dark January morning and I was getting ready for work in my dimly lit bedroom. I put on a coat, shuffled around my tightly furnished bedroom and headed out the door. It wasn't until I made my way up the escalator to Aldgate, having spent 10 minutes walking to my stop on the Northern Line, then spending 40 minutes on the Northern Line, changing over at Bank, that the lady stopped to tell me that I had a pair of knickers stuck to the back of my coat. (gasps) Wow. Okay. Turns out, whilst getting dressed, I'd brushed past my clothes horse and a black thong had attached itself to my coat. In my embarrassed state of wanting the ground to swallow me up, I tried to grab said knickers off the back of my coat, only I couldn't reach. So this kind lady grabbed them for me before shoving them into my hand discreetly so I could stuff them into my bag and carry on like nothing had happened. Oh, so my question is, what is the etiquette when you realise you have a pair of knickers stuck on your coat? Many thanks, Kate. Oh, God. Kate, this happened to our Ryan in year eight and he still gets flashbacks about it. With a pair of knickers? My mum was drying his PE kit and she shoved it in his bag and then as he opened it... A pair of her knickers fell out, and obviously in year eight, that's like yeah. you bringing your mum's knickers, and it was stuck to his rugby shirt. I say knickers; it was a full-on g-string. Oh, I think my dad was your home that week. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes it worse. Wow. She would also, in her defence, mm. she's she was quite a young mum. You know, she was probably only in her early thirties then. Mm. So yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, uh, Kate, I think you've just got to laugh. You've just got to find it funny. You're not going to see that lady again. It's on the tube. You never see people on the tube. Well, you occasionally might. Did I tell you? I don't know if I should say this. Mm -hmm. But my my mum lent out of Bradley a a day bag to go away with. Okay. And he found certain things in there that... mm, He still to this day won't tell us what was in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we'll never know. Yeah. We'll get him up on stage. We mm. can ask him. Oh, do you know what? It's not a bad idea. He won't tell me. I got really drunk once. I went, tell me what was in that bag. He went, I can't. I said, I can't. I was like, right, okay. Anyway, carry on. Okay. Uh, yeah, but Kate, I think you just laugh. You just laugh. It's a funny story. You've shared it with us. I don't think there's anything else you could do. This one is from Anonymous again. Dear William Jordan and the whole sexted team, my mum used to work for a well-known high street cosmetics store and on one occasion she asked me to help her restock after the shop had closed due to some staff shortages. I was more than happy to oblige. After a few hours of tirelessly moving things around the store, I got a sudden urge to pass wind. Seeing it was just the two of us working and not being shy around my mum, I proceeded to let the trump out. Immediately proceeding, said wind, I stood up and noticed something wasn't quite right. Oh, no, you'd shit yourself. As I made my way to the staff toilets, they mean lavatory, in a hurry, I could feel something travelling down my leg oh. at quite a fast rate. God. Before I knew it, a perfectly spherical item that can only be described as a Malteser had rolled out of my trouser leg and was now on the floor. All I could do at that moment was tap it with my shoe. It rolled into the corner of the room. Okay. My question is... What is the etiquette when you happen to soil yourself in public, especially when you've left some evidence? Keep up the amazing work. You brighten our week. All the best, Anonymous. They shat a Malteser. Well, no, I think it was it was a hard stool. Oh. And it was just sort of round. I mean, thank God it was hard. How can a little... Uh, never trust a fart. No. That's what I always say. <gasps> I know what I need to ask you. Sorry, we'll, I'll come on to this. It's bottom-related. 
look, I, I would go and what I would have done, it's probably still there in the store. Well, I hope it's not still there in the store. I hope they've cleaned it. But I would go and find a tissue and go and retrieve it from underneath whatever shelf and then go and put it down the loo. God, can that happen a little, just a little yes. bit like that? Come on. Apparently so. It's never happened to me, but... Like Nesquik. <laughs> well, as I say, at least it was solid. Oh, not Nesquik in ages. Oh, I don't know. Oh, did he still do Golden Nuggets? I don't know. Oh, do you remember Golden Grahams? No. Oh, yeah. What was your favourite cereal as a child? Um, Alpen. Get away. Sawdust. No, it's got raisins in it. It's like sawdust. Almond flakes. Mm, I'm trying to think. Rice crisp. <gasps> Wheatos. Wheatos. Okay. Mm. Was that Obviously, the... Ready Bread was number one. Yes. Um, but no, Anonymous, I don't think you can do anything. What I need to ask you, Jordan, mm -hmm. we've talked about clonic irrigation on this. Helen, up in Manchester. Yeah. On the second night, we go and do Manchester, because mm. we're doing Manchester twice. Yeah. The So we do it on the Friday night, and on the Saturday, I think we're in Birmingham. Yeah. She has got space if you want a colonic on Saturday morning. Great, let's do it. I will confirm that with her? Yep. Okay. Are we great. doing this on the... Yeah. No, we're not doing it on stage. No. Are you going to come and watch? We you hold me hand? Yeah. Yeah. I've said it before. I just want... Just us to make eye contact. Just as it goes up. I... <laughs> Are we filming this? We're filming this. No, I mean the colonic. Well, I don't know. I need to. I need to get. You are the more significant part of the colonic irrigation. There's no point us getting self shoot Alex along if you're not there. <sighs> I don't know how I feel about that, but okay. Anyway, Helen's very excited. She started listening to the podcast. So, oh, is she? Yeah. Hi, Helen. She's yeah. I'll, you'll see me and me ourselves soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm called William. <laughs> um, <laughs> This is from Rob, final letter. Hello, William, Jordan and the gang. When I was at university, I lived in a shared house. One of my housemates had a very loud and active sexual life with the oh, other half. so did mine. I'll never forget it. It was like 12 o'clock at night. I just went, wow. <laughs> well, yeah, you man. Okay. You were a good lad, him. Good. <sighs> Me and my other housemate were quite sure they had late night sex in the communal living room as the curtains would always be shut and none of us would ever close them. One morning, I came down and found the TV remote sandwiched between the sofa. It had a very suspicious whiteness encrusted on it, and between the buttons, it was definitely cum. Who jizzes on a remote? The only thing I could think of doing was giving it a thoroughly deep clean. Was that the right thing to do? Yes. Uh, what is the etiquette for when there is jism on communal house share items from Rob? What sort of weirdos are jizzing on remotes? Is that a fetish? Sorry if we're kink shaming. Sorry. We got done for that last time. Yeah. It, it could have been yogurt. Well, it could have been. Yeah. I think it's just, it, well, regardless of what is on remote controls, do you clean your remote controls? How often do you disinfect them? No, not really. Oh, my God. They're bacteria breeding I grounds. Bet they are, yeah. 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 Get your, your wipe, anti back wipe. I'll do that now. Yeah. I've just had a, an order of vinegar spray. Oh, have you? And you... sieve. <gasps> sieve. Oh, William. Not Siv. I forgot to tell you. Yeah. I've got a spray mop. It's changed my life. <gasps> yes, I've got... Which one? Um, The Vildegrupt one. Um, Vielda. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, the oh, red one. Honestly, it's because I just get it out now and give it a little... I do my sides at night mm. and then spray mop my floor. Oh, it's fantastic. Just get out, have a little squirt. Oh, last weekend, yeah. sorted out my wardrobe. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, we did. And we sent each other photos of we our did, respective, we? respectively organised wardrobes. Um, and I, oh, I've got a new spray mop. But yeah, um, don't go jizzing on remotes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the take home from this week. Yeah. And if somebody does, probably wipe it down. And if you do, yeah, wipe it immediately afterwards. Don't leave it. Wherever you finish, wipe it up. Yeah. If you can access it. Mm. Did you ever have one of those, like, socks that was like... No. 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 Did you not? No. No, me neither. Well, what a, what a mixed bag of letters. Not sure we were of any use whatsoever in any of those letters. Should we do, a, like, a poll on the weirdest place you've jizzed for next week or something? No, not really. The, the no. weirdest thing you've spaffed on? No. No? Can you tap a remote control? Let us know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know. That was weirder things. Yes, probably. Mm. Well, that'll keep them tuning in. Anyway, thank you for your questions and dilemmas. Remember, you can listen every Tuesday and Friday, and we will chat to you on Friday. We, th we do an episode on Friday as well, so listen to that. We don't, do we? We do. Yes. See you on Friday. Bye. Bye.